All right, all right, let's hop into my dot files. So, lives out here, dot files. This stores my config for everything. I don't set any setting manually. Uh, if I do, I quickly get it in my dot files. And my dot files is all Ansible. So I, I sit down on a brand new Ubuntu VM and I run this bash curl command, which does the initial setup. But then once my bash profile is on the system, I just have to run dot files and it will, um, uh, let me just make a new thing here. Cool. Okay. So I'm in my, I'm in my dot files. Um, if I just run dot files, it basically does a git pull to make sure I've got the updated version of the dot files. And then it's Ansible. Ansible's going to do everything and make sure stuff's updated, copy out my config if it ever changes. Um, I use, so this is exactly how it would look if this was a fresh system. It would just take longer and it wouldn't skip stuff. But um, yeah, it's all automated. And so if I ever change anything, I would just make the Ansible change here, push it up to GitHub. And then on some other computer, I would just rerun dot files. Oh, cool. Here's a new version of Go. So I have Go 1.21.3. It detected 1.21.4 exists. So now it's going through the crap to install the newest version of Go. And then it moves on, right? I love this. This is how I set up my NeoVim, Bash, everything is this. And so I'd love to just, once this is finished, just walk through it. How is it set up? Where does the config live? And if you know Ansible, hopefully you eat this up. It's great. Cranky developers manifesto. That's funny. Um, oh, ZSH. That's a, that's a ship I haven't hopped on yet. I just still am a, I just still bash. How are you setting up your things though? Are you stowing or? Is there a script that um, installs this? Or do you just git clone this into your like dot config folder maybe? No, it's fine. Um, oh, tools, okay, tools, install. Oh, you got a brew. How are you? I see you're creating sim links manually for each of your config directories into your dot config. Yeah. Okay. You may like my version instead. Uh, before I was using Ansible for all of this, I was kind of doing the same thing. I was using a, uh, a, a tool called Stow, which is the same behavior of creating a sim link. It's like you define the link between the two folders and Stow will copy stuff in and out via sim link type stuff. You know, you stow the files here or stow them there, whatever. Um, I will show you, I've got a, like, when I ran this dot files command, I'm going to star this just so I have it. Um, I guess support, support the nerds. Um, let me, yeah, okay, so my dot files is done. Let me come up here. Here's mine. This is my install script, basically. On first run, I just have to run like a curl command to get this, and that's documented on my thing. But basically, um, it's gonna make sure that Ansible's installed. If it's not, it installs it. I only run Ubuntu, so this is, you know, apt. Um, some Python stuff or accessory Ansible stuff. And then it's going to make sure if the repo doesn't exist locally, I'm going to clone it for the first time. And if it does, I'm just going to make sure that it's updated. I do a git pull, right? Um, I make sure I've got my Ansible modules updated or installed for the first time. I use some Ansible modules. What do I use? 
uh, yeah, okay, Kubernetes core and community general. I just make sure these are on the system and updated. Um, and then I run the Ansible playbook, which the playbook is here. Right. Um, I commit all this to GitHub. You can literally fork my repo and run it. Um, this Ansible will pull down private SSH keys, uh, my GitHub username, my GitHub email, all uh, open AI tokens, all that stuff gets created um, because I've got it stored encrypted. So my only job is to get the secret for this in the right file on my system. It's my job to get the, it's like a 200 character long password and using Ansible vault. And then you see here that vault um, path. I just have to get this file here with the secret. It's my job to get the secret there. I've got it in my personal, I use one password for my vault. Um, so I just have to get that token there. And if it's there, I run the playbook with that secret. And so then I've got stuff in here that's gonna, when when I you know configure Git, it's gonna pull this stuff. Here's my open AI key. This is all in GitHub, but I've got the secret. And so I can safely commit all this stuff to GitHub. And I'm gonna have these variables locally. I've got SSH keys, public and private SSH keys that I want on all my systems. I can commit this to GitHub because it's encrypted. It's my job to handle the secret, right? So that's pretty cool to me. On a fresh VM, I can sit down at a brand new Ubuntu, just get the password file in the right spot and then run that bash curl command and this will all, ju I'll just have exactly what I'm sitting at right now. NeoVim's configured, all my secrets, blah, 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 blah. Um, there's a lot of artifacts and stuff. Um, yeah, I, I love using Ansible. So that's how I get secrets on the system. Each role just, you know, references these things. Um, but that's the whole dot file script is at the end of the day, it's just gonna run this playbook command, which was down here, right? It did some magic stuff at the beginning and you know, Gosh, Tmux. Yep, it did a git pull, made sure my Galaxy modules are updated, run the playbook with the vault file, and then this is Ansible running. And that's it, that's the whole thing. Let's take a look at the roles. For example, my bash config, All right? Everything is beautifully in a role over here. Everything is a, if I wanna change or add a bash alias or a function or add something to my path or something, it goes in this role. The role stores all of the config for everything. My bash config lives in the bash role. All of my NeoVim config, all my plugin files, all my Lua files, it's all in Ansible. And then that tasks in the role get the files where they need to go. Uh, so a role is a way of grouping a set of tasks. So, this is built into Ansible. Here's the playbook. So I run I run some tasks at the beginning and then I just run a role. So I say include a role and I just say the role name. And Ansible is configured wherever the playbook lives. It assumes that right there, there should be a roles folder and then it will look for the name of the role. Um, so I just do this with a loop, but like if I if I went over to my flux node install thing here, here's a different playbook that actually lists roles manually. If we crack open um, flux.yaml, yep, this is the list of tasks. Here's the playbook, here's the hosts, import these variables, and then run the common role, run the UFW role. All of that are just folders in the roles directory, right? Uh, yeah, so the way I'm doing it is I've got a variable file up here and it defines my default roles. If I don't specify anything, it's going to automatically just run these roles. Now, there's I pulled this one out of default. I want to only run this if I if I say to run it specifically. Same thing with alacrity. 
just, you know, whatever. But by default, it will run these. Um, unless I specify one. That's just how my playbook, my playbook has some logic in it to do this. But yeah, it'll run these by default. Yay. So let's look at bash. Let's just look at it by default. It finds the role, finds the tasks directory and looks for main.yaml. That's just how Ansible works. It will always look for this file. And then if you want to split things up from there, you sure can, which is what I do. I wanted to structure this in a way where if I wanted to sit down at like a Fedora box or my dot files, yay, I support Fedora. Obviously Fedora doesn't use apt. So I'd have to write tasks just for Fedora. So I'm saying Ansible can auto detect the system that it's on. What family of OS am I? If it's Debian, run the Ubuntu file. If it's Darwin, run the Mac file. If I wanted to support a Mac, then I'd have tasks that like did a brew install instead of an apt install. So I wanted just from the get go to be able to support multiple OSs if I ever did that. Right now it's just all Ubuntu, but I thought I don't want to have to refactor anything if I want to be cool later and have multi OS. So the same dot files will support all these OSs. Long story short, so it for bash, finds the role, finds the main.yaml, and this says if it's Debian, which it always is, run Ubuntu.yaml. So these are the tasks that my bash role does. Um, I use a prompt thing called oh my bash. So it, um, it like downloads the oh my bash install script from here and runs it if it's not already installed. Um, and then, like I said, all of my config lives inside of the bash role. It's just in files. So this task says copy bash RC into my profile dot bash RC. Just replace the default one with my bash RC. Whoops, this one. Ignore the error, sorry. Um, set file um, type equals shell. So this is the bash RC I want on my system. It's custom, right? Uh, here we go. So copy the bash RC, copy my profile file. All of it just lives over here. Uh, copy my, uh, make sure this config folder exists. Copy my themes. Make sure my default terminal is user bin bash. Set private variables. So this is where if I have my secrets, like, you know, vault secrets, and I provide a vault file, it's going to create some private files with the secrets in them, you know, plain text on my system. So my system will then have the decrypted version of my open AI key or whatever. Um, yeah, anyway, so it gets those on there and then it's going to, uh, which one of these? Copy config. Where do I copy bash? Oh, here. Here's where I copy the this entire bash folder into my profiles.config folder. All right. So then all of these aliases and function definition files and stuff get copied. And my bash RC loops over every shell file in that directory and imports it. So there's no sim link. It's just, it gets all the files dynamically in the right spot. My Ansible tasks do that. Uh, yeah, and that's all for bash, right? Um, that's all my bash stuff. So if I ever wanna add, you know, I've been doing a little bit of uh, Kubernetes stuff. I've been adding some custom completion and some aliases here. Um, where did I put those? Oh, no, the recent one I did was this one. So I added a new NeoVim function where I want to edit code that lives on a remote system. But I want to use my local, I don't want to SSH into some place and use just vanilla Vim. That's boring. Uh, I want to use my local NeoVim and my local NeoVim LSPs and all my linters and all of that stuff. 
VS Code lets you do this, right? You can remote SSH via VS Code and you get all your extensions and all your magic. So I wanted that same thing with NeoVim. So I made, um, let me just do uh, 20. So this function will recreate the same effect. I'm going to edit. I want NeoVim to open this folder on this server with my local NeoVim. I get all this stuff. These files live remotely and I can edit them and they are edited on the remote system with all my local environment magic. Pretty awesome. Uh, Cause I hate SSHing into a server and oh yeah, I know Vim, but I don't have all my cool stuff. So I made that, that was pretty cool. So all I had to do is get that into a file and then just run my dot files and it's gonna get this file on my system, right? But yeah, so this is my dot files, everything, all my config. I install this tool canines. I've got a config file for it. The tasks, just check if a new version exists. If it does, it does all the needful to go out and grab a GitHub release, extract it, get it in the right spot. Yeah, but that's my dot files. Um, it's a bash script. So I'm just, uh, where's the bash script? Any argument that I pass to the dot files command, I pass it to directly to my Ansible playbook command. So any Ansible arguments, um, so if I ran Ansible playbook, blah, 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 I wanna run the bash tag. I can just do it right here. Then it passes that tag to the playbook command and then it only runs bash. Or I can say, run all the defaults, but skip bash. You know, there's a tag for that in Ansible. Skip tags, bash. And it just will run everything else except bash. Yeah, it lists it here, but it's actually gonna skip it. So anyway, so that's my dot files. And Ansible is idempotent and I just like how it works. And so I use it for all my dot files.